things that I think uh, is an interesting kind of historical pattern is the is the posture that OPEC uh, has had over the years. When I was secretary, and you'll all find this, I think, uh, unless you already were part of it, uh, you know, kind of, kind of in, in retrospect, sort of amusing and surprising, but during my tenure, OPEC operated uh, in what it called its price band. And the price band at that time was 22 to 28 dollars. They were uh, allegedly seeking to modify production to keep oil in that price band. And I know this seems kind of hard to imagine now, but I can remember as long as I was secretary that prior to every OPEC meeting, uh, within the U.S. government and the governments of Western Europe, there would be great concern over uh, the fact that, that at the time, I think it was primarily Venezuela and Libya, maybe Iran, that was surprisingly those three, I guess, uh, were, were trying to urge their OPEC colleagues to increase the price band to 24 to 30. In a, now, in, a, in a world in which, you know, oil well, since then has gone into triple digits on many occasions, today sits in, the, in that level, you know. I mean, it seems kind of hard to believe that, that less than a decade ago, we were worried about the possibility that the top end of the band would be 30. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, sort of hard in, in, in every respect to, to look back only that short period of time. Then it began to work up, and throughout the time that that I served both in the Senate and um, in the Department of Energy, there was always this, this view that, uh, that the OPEC leadership was concerned about too high a price. The reason they had a ban was based in part on a fear that at some point it would trigger alternatives uh, and people would get, yeah, well, and also that people would, would turn to alternatives. There would be a demand destruction kind of activity going on. And what I think happened throughout the balance of the 2000 decade is that it kept going up and this reaction never happened. Uh, the price kept going up and people kept buying. And I think as that, that occurred, there became a certain confidence, I guess, that maybe it wasn't going to be that easy for uh, the world to, you know, come up with, you know, a substitution. And number two, I think there was a realization that countries such as China were seeing their demand or consumption level of their demand rise so rapidly and so and, and be projected to be so large that even if somehow in some other place uh, somebody came up with some, some substitution, uh, there would there's the market the, the hunger in the market would be there. And I think that has been kind of the dominant philosophy for some time. Um, that I think may be no longer, you know, a unanimous opinion in the, in the oil producing countries uh, as a result of these of, of shale. And so we'll, we'll see. I, I think I, you can't answer beyond a, you know, kind of a, 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 the wait and see answer at this stage, but I do think it may be altering the, the geopolitical picture. Uh, <coughs> 